Hey guys, what's up? It is Sam from Harky Fishing and glad to have you back with us for another uh, Table Rock Lake Fishing Report. Got some, uh, you know, got some change. Finally, uh, I feel like I've been a broken record for weeks and weeks. Finally got some new information for you guys and uh, uh, wanted to give you guys that information. First of all, let's go with the lake level, man. We're sitting at 914.1. And uh, so the lakes come down, it's it's really about a foot and a half to two foot below uh, the normal level for this time of the year. Lake temperature is running between 85 and 87, depends on if it's a sunny day or a cloudy day. We finally got rain. I mean, it's been, seems like two months since we've had rain and uh, we're finally getting a little bit of rain and it's helping uh, to keep that lake temperature cool down a little bit. But the fish are changing and uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a little bit early and uh, maybe they're not changing a whole lot, but it seems like uh, for me at least that the, uh, the bite has been changing up a little bit. Um, for the last like six to eight weeks, we've been talking about brush piles, brush piles, brush piles. You got to fish the conservation brush piles. And, uh, those are still a heavy, heavy player in the uh, deal. I hope you watch the end of this video. Cause I'm going to show you how to find the thermocline using your fish finder. And, uh, and that can help so much when you know, to know where to fish and how deep should be your maximum depth of fish. So stay tuned at the end of this video. I'm going to put that on there. So make sure you're watching. So anyhow, yeah, the brush piles, uh, they're still paying off for us. Uh, this last Wednesday night, we ended up placing third place and, uh, but we only had like 10.9 pounds and the weights have really gone down as the winning weights, the winning weight was 12 pounds and a little bit of change. And, uh, last Friday night, the winning weight was just about the same, about 12 or 13, I think it was 13 and a half or just shy of that. So the weights are going down. That tells you these fish are moving and everybody is struggling to get on top of them. And like I said, I don't guide, I'm not out on the lake every day. I can't really stay right on top of these things, but, uh, um, but they're moving and they're changing. And so how do you adapt to that is very important. So, um, we got third place this last Wednesday, uh, with, uh, like 10.9 pounds and, uh, man, it was a struggle. And last Friday night, um, results, we had nine, 90, something like that. And, uh, that was with three fish and, uh, you know, I kind of pride myself on always being able to catch a limit every tournament we need to catch a limit and we only had three fish and uh man if we'd had a limit i think we'd have won but uh we ended up winning big bass at 449 it came out of a brush pile we're not changing anything up uh you know we were fishing brush piles and uh we had a uh, like a three and a half pounder to go with it out of a brush pile and then we had about a 15 and an eighth incher to go out of it that came out of a brush pile it weighed maybe one six one seven at the most and so, you know, the fishing was really tough. We hit for five and a half hours, we hit every brush pile we knew to hit. Um, really ones that have been fantastic for us and uh, they didn't pay off. And so those fish are starting to move. Uh, I was hoping that was a fluke on Friday. And so, uh, you know, when we got back Wednesday, um, uh, Friday we fished in the, uh, you know, between basically Kimberling and Campbell Point. We fished the brush piles between there and then, uh, so when we went out Wednesday, we thought we would try the brush piles basically from Eagle Rock up to uh, up to Shell Knob. And so we make the long run to start with and we start fishing brush piles on the way back. And uh, um, so we started fishing those and uh, there were some bites, but man, they were few and far between. Uh, you know, we I, I got a little false sense of security. The very first brush pile we fished had, uh, we caught two keepers out of. So in the first 20 minutes of the tournament, we had two keepers. Um, neither one of them were anything to write home to mama about, but we had a couple two pounders in the boat and, uh, I was optimistic that it was going to be a great night. Um, but we really, really struggled. We got up to four keepers, um, out of brush piles and we had about an hour left. And, uh, so really what we did, we transitioned to some of the, uh, oh, basically some of the better summertime banks. Um, and, I don't know hardly how to tell you what those banks are other than experience, but what we were looking for, um, you know, fit bass are a structure oriented fish. So they like lay downs. They like timber. They like brush. They also like, you know, um, basically like chunky rock. 
And so uh, we, uh, we made a little short run up Kings River, just the mouth of Kings River, and started looking for uh, those type of, of uh, situations. And, and Kings River is full of those. There's a lot of brush in Kings River. And uh, so we started throwing onto a few of the, uh, you know, the lay downs and the, uh, the brush and stuff that lays into there. And really we kind of got lucky because we had four fish in there. We, our biggest fish was maybe 2.4 pounds and we had several one sevens, a couple of one sevens. And uh, so we really needed a big upgrade. Um, we ended up catching one that weighed, I think it was three, four or three, five, which helped us get that third place. That's not a big stringer. When you're talking about catching 11 pounds on table rock, to me, that's a, that's, that's not very good. That's a bad day. But right now that ended up being third place. So, you know, the fish are, are transitioning a little bit about that seasonal transition. You know, usually this happens somewhere in August. This is every year is unique in weather. We've had a really hot June, a really, really hot July, and I'm hoping we're not in for a really, really, really hot August, but uh, it, uh, you know, it changes things. Usually in the middle of August, these fish are starting to transition. You'll start seeing them moving from the main lake to the first third of the big creeks. And uh, it's, I'm not sure that's happening yet. Um, it's still too early to say, but I can tell you they are starting to transition out of the brush piles. And uh, so, you know, the next thing to look at, the first third of the creeks, sometimes it's the brush piles in the first third of the creeks. Sometimes it's the steeper banks. Uh, I always look for, uh, you know, really transitional um, areas where uh, there's deep water access. Those fish use the creek channel as a major highway. And so I'm looking for that kind of situation where maybe uh, um, the fish are using a creek channel, but there's a little shallow feeding area um, that they'll use. Um, a lot of times, if you can find deep, um, deep water or a channel next to a pea gravel point, uh, something that comes right way out into the lake, that can be fantastic. And so, uh, um, you know, that that's really what we've been looking for. We're still using as far as bait wise um, to catch quality fish. We're using the uh, jig, a chompers, um, green pumpkin, purple laminate. I'm not a, a rocket scientist. That works over and over again. At night, I've been pairing that up with either a uh, black and blue Christie craw or the black and blue uh, chompers twin tail trailer. Um, I haven't found any advantage to either one over the other. Basically, you just need a little trailer on there that, that flaps a lot in the current. And, uh, man, that's, uh, you know, really, that's what I've been using. Uh, my partner's been using a 10-inch plum worm by old Zoom Old Monster. Um, the power worm works good as well. Um, and we're just throwing those into the brush piles and throwing those up against uh, laydowns and stuff that would uh, be good. And it's been, uh, you know, it's been really slow, but obviously that's still working we're up to 18 in a row now i i'm yeah i don't want to brag but that is really impressive and that makes me feel good and to know we're doing the right thing um it's gonna that streak's gonna break soon you know you can't get too cocky in this business because the fish will prove to you <laughs> they'll prove to you time and time again that you aren't kevin van dam and so but we're really appreciative uh, it's been good we've been seeming to stay on them but I know that streak's fixed to come to an end because the fish are changing. And uh, that brush pile bite is just getting worse and worse and worse. It is still good. So yeah, if I was going to recommend you go out and try something, I would say go to the brush piles first and see if you can't catch a few fish because they seem to be more concentrated around that than anything else, uh, at least at night and in the evenings. But uh, it's getting tougher. So anyhow, y'all keep it up. Um, take a kid fishing, man. I hope you guys uh, catch something good. And uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Hit that little subscribe button right over there. Um, and make sure and like the video. And I love the comments, man. Keep the comments coming. We appreciate you guys uh, um, watching. And uh, check out the uh, little uh, video right after this that's how to find the thermocline. Because the thermocline sitting at about 38 feet. And uh, check that video out. And you'll be able to check it. You'll be able to find your thermocline every time you go out to know never fish deeper than the thermocline so check it out man thank you guys for watching bye bye all right guys so uh, real quick i want to show you guys how to find where the thermocline is uh, we're sitting out here this is uh this is the end of july and i uh, got my hummingbird out i've already got the settings brought up basically sitting on factory settings um, i've got the chart speed cranked up pretty high because i use this for drop shotting every now and then 
but uh, anyhow, um, so factory on that, the chart speed is five. And so anyhow, just wanted to show you what to do, okay? So you can see right now it's pretty clear, but what we wanna do is we wanna go to our sensitivity and we wanna start turning up that sensitivity. We're Notice we're gonna start cranking that thing up and we're gonna go pretty much to max. And what you're gonna see is a line right across here. So right now, thermocline is sitting. You, got, you see the 30 and this right here is 60, so that's 45. The thermocline sitting about 38 to 40 feet deep. So that's how you find a thermocline. You just crank that sensitivity all the way up. You can do the same thing with gain or whatever your, your uh, fish finder says. Hope you guys uh, can use that tip.